Welcome. I'm Riley Karsh. I'm Tova Copan. We are thrilled to bring you the We Go Boldly podcast. Let's talk big burning questions, life changes, and maybe a bit of personal business. Let's be bold and brave together. Are you ready? I am. Here comes the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to We Go Boldly, the podcast. We are so thrilled to have you with us today on season seven, where we are taking our power back as we've been doing all season long. And uh, we are just, wait, no, we're not taking our power back. We're embracing our power. What am I talking about today? (laughs) If you can't tell, I am a little bit tired today, but that's okay. It's you know, December, it's the end of the year. These are the things that happen when uh, you spend all year working, right? Like we're all like this. Um, But no, we are embracing our power in season seven. Today, I maybe not ironically, we are letting go of outcomes and our need to control things. So I'm going to let go of my mild gaffe and keep going. (laughs) <laughs> That's how we do things in the world of podcasting. Uh, before we get started on today's episode, I obviously want to introduce my amazing, fantastical, wonderful, all good things co-host Tova. Um, I'm Riley. Here's Tova. How are you today, Tova? Um, well, I'm feeling personally attacked by this episode and the timing <laughs> of it. So there's that. Yeah, totally. Um, we... Uh, this is maybe the closest that we've ever recorded a podcast to when you all are listening to it. Yes. So it is Monday of the week that you are listening to the podcast. And we attempted to, uh, we had plans to record the podcast last week. And listen, we are not always 100% all of the time. I think we make that very clear. And Riley and I, both recognize that sometimes one of, as long as one of us is like good to go and on, then we can, you know, power through the podcast and kind of pull the other one along. And usually the other one who's feeling blah will like shake it off. Right. Yeah. And last week it was very clear that neither of us were in a position to pull the other one along. Yeah. It was not happening. No. And fortunately, Riley said, we're not doing this today. Um, Because I was like, no, I'm I'm fine. Fine. I can do it. She's like, clearly you can't. And and she was also in no position to pull me along. And so um, it didn't have anything to do with the actual topic of the podcast. We couldn't have really done any of them. Yeah. But the topic does feel like a personal affront of some kind. Um, as we are, at least I am, you know, bare knuckling it through this end of the year and this season and, um, really struggling to let go of outcomes when the outcomes are, feel so important. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's obviously a lesson in that and, Um, I did do this research last week when I was struggling. Um, and you know, one thing that helped me, and so I'm going to just say this so that if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I don't want to let go of outcomes. (laughs) So I will share the one thing that kind of kept me going was that, um, you are not nearly as effective at actually getting the outcomes you want as you think you are if you're trying to control the outcome. That it is only when you're able to let go of that control and let go of pushing and and trying to make something happen is when things actually happen. So this is an illusion. Um, And I think that that is sort of the part of me that was like, okay, okay. All right. So I'll just keep going. And I, you know, I thought that there's a, Albert Einstein says a lot of, you know, smarty pants things. And um, <laughs> one of them that he said, and I, and this goes, you know, I, I love his quote. I, I literally cited it last week about how 
you know, I will misquote it as I do, that you I believe either believe everything is a miracle or nothing is a miracle kind of thing. But also he says the most important decision we make is whether we believe we live in a friendly or a hostile universe. And it feels hostile, <laughs> but I still think we can decide that that's not what we believe we live in, that we can decide we live in a friendly universe. And so I think that when that happens, um, it, you know, it, it is helpful <laughs> and it, it helps keep us going. Yeah. And, and you can decide, you know, that the universe has your back, right? Like you can yeah. decide that whatever is happening in your life. And I, I, I really dislike the, everything happens for a reason line because it's so dismissive of feelings. Um, I also think it's a lie, but continue. yeah, <laughs> but it's just like, it's thrown in there when you're like mm -hmm. full mm -hmm. in the midst of trauma and you're like, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but beyond that, I, I do think, you know, if you focus on this concept that the universe has your back, it is easier to look at the world in the way you were just describing Toba. Like it is easier to see the world in that like, yes, you can decide that the universe is hostile or you can decide that it's, you know, that it's not. Well, and I think, you know, I, I don't believe everything happens for a reason because no. I think it is. There's no grand design. Right. To think of what some of the things are that happen. Right. Like what's the reason there? That doesn't yeah. seem right. But I, I do think that there's a bigger plan maybe that we are not a party to. And I'm not saying that horrifying things are actually part of the plan, but I'm I'm just saying that I do think that there is a bigger plan, right? So I do think that there is something out there that might be doing its best <laughs> to try to be friendly and humans are just like mucking it up. Yeah. Um, and so, I, you know, I think that, that it's important to do this. And, and if we talk about like why we need to let go, um, one really important thing about letting go of control is that, and I just said it and I want to say it again, it's an illusion. Like we are not actually in control of things there is. And we've talked about before on a, more, you know, less side of big, I don't, I, I don't like that Facebook show, like stole the word meta, but like <laughs> on, on a, on a bigger level, like this, that's what we're talking about now. We've talked about it before on like very specific levels and have talked about how you can't really control other people's actions and you can't control, you know, all the stuff you can't control. But I, I think it's important to remember like really very little is in our control. Like, and so um, I think that we have to remember that so yeah. that because you spend so much energy and this is energy that you could be spending embracing your power, right? This is energy that you could be spending letting light into your life, that you could be spending finding moments of joy. Like there are so many things that we could be doing with the energy that we use to try to hold on and try to control things. Yeah. So, you know, as you say, and I'm looking at our outline here, but why like why are we letting go of control in the first place we're letting go of control so we can embrace our power if we're constantly attempting to control our environment then where is the space for us to focus on ourselves where is the space for us to embrace our true most honest version of who we are right it takes, as you said, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to try and pull the puppet strings of other people or other situations or, or inanimate objects for, for that matter. Um, you know, I personally believe the only thing we can control is ourselves, our actions and our reactions. I don't see how you control anything else on the planet, right? There's, what control do you have over another human really unless they choose to submit to you and yeah. that's still a choice that they've made so you don't really have control um so 
and 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 it's then it goes back to what you've just said it's an illusion right it's the illusion of control it's the illusion of power it's the illusion of having a say over another person's behavior actions reactions feelings emotions um and and that's none of that's real or lasting so this idea that you can control your environment so much that you will feel some sense of power or safety is ultimately a failing belief. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I also think, um, you know, we were saying you can, can, you can control your actions. You can control what your reactions are, but I think it's important also to remember that if you haven't done or aren't doing the hard work of listening to your inner voice, confronting the grief in your past and feeling your feelings and all of these things, you might not even be in control of your own reactions. So you may be even controlling even less than you think you are. Right. Um, but I, I also, you know, we've talked about how much energy it takes into control. And I, I thought something that was interesting and, and it goes back to this concept. I think that sometimes it's like you pick your heart, like, like, you know, you kind of have your choice sometimes and um, of whether, and I, the only one I can think of is one that I don't want to use. So I'm not going to use it, but where the, you, you know, you have two, two hard options, you have two hard choices, but one might give you a good outcome and one is going to give you a negative outcome, but they both take a lot of energy. And I, so I like this concept of, you know, it still takes energy to surrender. Like you still, it's an active it is an active thing. Cause I think when we think of like surrendering to the universe or surrendering this to this concept or even letting go kind of sounds like an inactive thing. Like you're holding on and that's active. That is when you're in control. That is when you were doing something and letting go means you stop doing things and surrendering means you stop. And I, I want to, and, and I think that's just where our minds go. I think it's important to recognize that it does take energy to surrender it does take energy to let go that letting go is a choice. I mean, we've learned that from frozen, I think, but like, <laughs> let it, if we haven't learned it, like go watch the movie. Right. Like um, where have you been? And then watch frozen too. Cause it's so much better. And there's so many life lessons in it, but, um, but like letting go is an active thing and surrendering is an active thing that takes energy. And it might mean it takes grounding work or meditation or like there's, it is doing something, or it might mean, you know, reminding yourself on the regular that like, I do not control the situation. I am not controlling, you know, but it is active. And I think that's really important because especially in Western society, and then taking it a step further, especially in the United States, there is always so much, um, I don't say benefit, but like focus on the doers. And so when we have words that make us think of not doing something, even if we're doing something, I think that then we immediately are like, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm a doer. Um, and so I just, I want to highlight that, you know, there is energy that it takes to surrender, but that energy accomplishes so much more than spending your energy on control because surrendering means you're accepting what is, right? And we have talked about this a lot this season. We've talked about it in previous seasons, but I actually think I enjoy the com the way it works this season more mentally. Um, but we're talking about like accepting what is completely because then also that gives us a better concept of what we can control, right? What we are reacting to. And then faith, faith that all is well or faith that the universe does have our back or that it is a friendly place. And that that's a lot of work. And so um, if you are a doer, just know that surrendering and letting go is doing. Yeah. Anytime you're making a choice, you're doing, right? It's only in the fence sitting that you're not doing or in the, in the, the lack of action. And so I agree that, you know, we've, we've sort of been indoctrinated into this idea that if you're not actively running towards something, then you're, you know, you're not worthwhile, which is a whole other episode. But um, I think one we've had somewhere back in the busyness section of things, but yeah. <laughs> you know, it's um, if we're not 
letting go of this death grip we have on everything around us, then we're spending all of our time chasing the illusion of our own power. And the idea, if you really drill into it, right, the idea that we have some kind of control over what's going to happen between us and another person, between us and whether we keep a job, you know, ultimately, right? Like all we can do is the best we can do. All you can do is fulfill your requirements. All you can do is, you know, be the best parent you can be, be the best spouse you can be. But, you know, that's all you can do in life. You cannot force any other human to reciprocate your feelings or to do whatever it is you want them to do in in a long-term situation. Now, obviously, some somebody could come back at me and say, well, sure, you can force somebody to do what you want them to do by, you know, threatening them or whatever, obviously. But that's not that's not the context we're talking about here. Um, and so the healthier, longer term, more, you know, compassionate towards yourself way of navigating this kind of situation is focusing on what you can control and what you can deal with. And that is yourself and getting to know yourself. And this is what we've been talking about since we started recording podcasts. This is, you know, as always, straight back to your inner voice. And who are you? And what are your core values? Who lives in the center of you that needs to come out and talk to people and be revealed? And so that brings me to, you know, why it's so hard to let go of control. And that's because control is very much rooted in being afraid and being fearful of what might happen or who might get to know you or what the outcomes might be, uh, right? Because we all want to be able to direct our own futures. We all want to be able to direct our relationships or who's going to love us and who's going to listen to us and who's going to be there for us and how, what's going to happen to the people we care about. And that kind of fear is a very strong driver of behavior. And so when we feel that level of fear, it is almost, an, I guess, a natural instinct to try and do anything to make that fear go away. And so controlling things is one way to you know, to deal with it, to make that feeling go away because it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. And, um, so I want to take a quick break and then come back and talk more about this, this, this concept of control and being rooted in fear and attached to fear. Cause I think it's really important, but let's just take a quick break and we will be right back. Tova here. I'll admit, when I think of a coach, I immediately think knee-high socks, whistles, and clipboards. Is it because I love Ted Lasso? Maybe. I mean, I think it's a good look for you, if I'm being honest. Thanks, I think. Anyway, that's not the kind of coaching we want to talk to you all about. True. We are talking about life and transition coaching, though I do still love a clipboard and a tube sock. Both Riley and I are lucky to have worked with incredible coaches throughout our lives. Before that, though, we struggled with where to start, believing in what coaching could really do for us, and, of course, putting ourselves first. Taking the leap and working with our coaches made all the difference. They gave us direction and support when we needed it most. Now, we are fortunate enough to be coaches ourselves, and we're excited to pay it forward. We can help you figure out where to start, create a roadmap, keep you accountable, and get to living your limitless life. Sounds pretty great. So if you want to figure out your next steps, check out our services at goboldlyinitiative.com slash services. We can't wait to talk to you. Now, back to the show. Okay, welcome back. Um, I I think that something that you were saying, Riley, is so 
important and about, um, you know, the fear being the driver. And there's something interesting that I read and it talks about how when you're in control mode, your vision gets very narrow and focused and the adrenaline is pumping, which happens when you're afraid. Like, I don't think people think of it that way, but that's kind of how your body body reacts when I, when you're afraid, you're like, okay, how do I get out? And then you're, you know, you're pumping and you're sweating and you are essentially living in a stress response. Like we've talked about these stress responses and you just talked about a little bit, but like back in the busy season when, and I, I just had a conversation with somebody yesterday, I was shopping in a place in town and she was talking about, um, how she, today was her day off and she just needed to take a nap and, um, but she didn't have time to take a nap. And so I started on my whole productivity thing and how we think we're productive, but we're really not. And like, we should take a nap. And, and then I joked that I had 15 hours of work to do in a three hour period. So I need to take my own advice. But, you know, we talked about that. And, but I also talked about how, you know, one of the best ways to help these, the stress cycle stop is by taking like breathing breaks throughout the day. And they can be like a minute long. And I, you know, and and you just take some deep breaths, you know, in for four, out for four, like 10 times and then move on with your day. But that would be so hard to do, like truly do if you are in control mode. And so even if your whole life is in control mode, you're not going to be able to really do that. You're going to have to take a break from it, at least for a minute. And, um, I know I can tell that I'm in a different place today than I was on Friday because, um, and and it's Monday, as I said earlier, but like Friday, Riley, you recommended some, um, meditations for me and I did one and was pretty much like talking back to the meditation the whole time. And I was like, no, you're (laughs) wrong. Like I was. I was emotional. I was crying. I was like, I was mad at the meditation and it kept telling me things like everything's going to be all right. And I was like, no, it's not. You don't like, I was like, but today I went to one of my favorites, which is the magic blanket overwhelm. And I was able to actually go through the path in the woods and I was able to sit on the couch and I was able to have the magic blanket and it was still stressful, (laughs) but like, I wasn't like yelling at it. And so I can tell that I'm like in a different phase of the stress cycle. But the the point of that story is I would have had to let go of control in order to appreciate that meditation from Friday. And so this concept of control and fear being rooted is your, I think it's so important or at least interesting for me, because what it's saying is your body is in the middle of a stress, like stress cycle and a fear response. I'm picturing like cave people running away from lions and you're just controlling the situation, you know? And so, and, and by the way, you're running away from a lion. You are not in control. A lion is chasing you. But if you're thinking like, if I just go this way, or if I just go that way, I'm really in control. And um, I'm not suggesting you surrender to the lion or anything. (laughs) But like in that, in that instance, the metaphor only goes so far, but um, I do think that we don't recognize that when we are holding tight so hard that we are, we are like physically harming ourselves and mentally harming ourselves. And we are keeping ourselves trapped in fear. And it might seem like the fear starts first and it probably does, right? Like with the chicken, the egg, that the fear is what makes us want to control something. But then I think our control and our desire to control keeps us in that fearful place. Yeah, I think the tighter we grasp things, whatever they are, you know, people, situations, environments, um, the more fearful we become because it also contains us, right? It makes our worlds smaller. And as we know from research and personal experience and just anecdotal experience, the smaller your world is the more fearful you are. And so, you know, as you sort of contain things, like you can't see me because I'm, unless you're watching on YouTube, YouTube. which you should come to our channel. Um, (laughs) As you, you know, contain things into this smaller and smaller, more contained, controlled space, your world shrinks and it becomes more fearful and you become more 
worried about outcomes and what might happen and who might see me and how might it go. And you're less likely to embrace change and you're less likely to be comfortable in new circumstances, right? It's a, it's a slippery slope, I think. And you, be, it, 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 I've seen it as people get older and, you know, they become not all people just to be very clear, not all older people, but I've seen it with some older people, um, where they are not able to get out as much and their worlds become more and more closely defined. And it becomes like frightening to use certain technology or they get frustrated and I don't want to use this. And this, why is this and it's smaller, smaller, smaller. And rather than expanding the worldview, rather than seeing different cultures or different um, types of people or different things as interesting and exciting, it becomes something that we're afraid of. And then we try to control and we otherize. And that's, you know, that's where we run into problems, obviously. So why are we talking about this when it comes to, you know, to embracing our power? We'll circle back to that, I think, a little bit. And as we said at the beginning, When we talk about embracing our power, we talk about making space. We talk about allowing ourselves room to embrace our power, room to acknowledge who we are. Now imagine yourself trying to do that while you're also desperately clinging to controlling everything around you. I don't know about you guys, but (laughs) I don't see how you do both, right? If you're trying to open, like if you imagine, you know, not to be cheesy, but if you imagine yourself opening like a flower, you can't simultaneously do that and pull puppet strings. Like you can't do both. So we want for you to think about how you embrace your power, how you get at those core personality traits, those core values, those things that make you, you, the most important parts of you and how you get at those things and allow them out and allow people to get to know you and take the risk of being vulnerable rather than focusing on controlling what might happen or who might get to know you or who might see you. Yeah. You know, I think that there's, part of the fear obviously is the unknown, right? So it's like, we're going to control, control, control. And the assumption that we make when we're trying to do that is that the unknown is bad. And, um, and I think that's easy, right? Because we don't know. It could be bad. Like it could be bad. We don't know. And that's scary. And so for me, I know one thing to sort of stop the cycle, the control cycle. And then I have to do a bunch of other things to actually get out of it, which we'll talk about. But like the thing that can like stop it is to remind her, like, what if it's better than I thought it was going to be? Like if, because, right. Because you're saying, what if it's worse Then if you believe in like chance, right. Then like, well, what if it's better? Cause it, it could be either one. And so sometimes just reminding myself that by holding on so tight, not only am I giving up, I th- well, I think I'm giving up the chance that it'll be worse. We all know that that's not what's happening, but I definitely am giving up the chance that it could be better. Like I'm definitely giving up the chance that the outcome could be more amazing than I even think it could be. And so I'm not leaving space for anything else to happen, but the fear and control. And Sometimes just that reminder of like, well, what if it could be better is enough for me to be like, all right, I need to do, I need to help myself here. I need to get out of this. It's not enough to get out of it, to be perfectly honest, but it's enough to recognize that I'm in a control cycle and I'm trapped in fear and that maybe I need to work on some things to figure out how to let go of the control. Yeah. I think another valuable question at that point is like, how is it right now? Right. Because if you're in a control cycle, something isn't great. Yeah. <laughs> so the question might be, what if it gets worse? But the question might also be is, you know, how is it right now? Is it is it great right now? Um, so I would throw that in the mix 
And and that goes, I think, to the concept of choosing your hard. Like yeah. you may be controlling things because you don't need you don't want to face the hard thing that you're avoiding. Yes. I mean, but, that's what I that's what I typically would find I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And and I think this happens a lot, you know, um, especially with kids, mm-hmm. that it's easier for them to go to anger than sadness. Yes. Like anger is like, I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm angry at you. Um, because I don't want to feel sad. Because I don't want to feel disappointed. I don't want to feel ashamed about something. I don't want to feel embarrassed. All of these complicated feelings, I want to feel angry. But when you actually talk to kids, angry is not easy. Angry is hard. Angry is scary. Angry is sad. You know, angry is all of these things. Um, and so you are choosing your hard, right? So there's one hard where just it keeps you in the cycle. I feel a feeling that's too big for me to express. So I'm going to feel angry. And then the other one can help you learn and experience the feelings, feel the feelings, learn from the feelings, grow as a person, give yourself space, and then move on. Right. And they're both hard, but we don't acknowledge them as being hard. Like we don't, I think we don't acknowledge either as being hard, right? So we don't recognize that sadness can be a really hard emotion for someone to feel and you feel really yucky when you're sad. And I will admit that I am sometimes get empowered by anger if it's like the right kind of anger. So I think that sometimes anger makes us feel powerful mm-hmm. and sad m- makes us feel yucky. Right. And and so, but we don't acknowledge that being sad is really hard, especially to kids and adults, anybody. <laughs> well, and I also think we are, as a society, we spend a lot of time talking about sadness as weakness. Yeah. And anger as strength. And so when looked through, look, if you look at it through that lens, it's much easier for a lot of people to be angry and to hide it as strength, right? To be like, oh, I'm big and tough. I'm so angry. Well, I mean, and it's it's, yeah. it, it's very hard to allow yourself to be sad and to be sad publicly, to allow people to see you as sad because it looks like you're weak or you're wallowing or you're a victim or you're somehow soft, you know, as if all of that is bad. Um, And so those kinds of distinctions make it, I think, extra challenging to deal with that kind of feeling as it comes through. A hundred and bajillion percent. Um, And I think that part of that is the type of society that we live in. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I know we don't like to attach like, male emotions, female emotions, all that blah, 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 because we have all of them. But our society sees like anger is strength with men. Yeah. And like, and, you know, we've all watched the like Supreme Court hearings. <laughs> like, yeah. We know who looks, who is actually being strong <laughs> like, and who is not. Um, And so I think that that is, is very true. And I will, I will just share just because, you know, so we do this um, circle every group, every, a circle every week, with, which is a group of women. And every week we share um, our celebrations and struggles. And my celebrate is not always like, you know, celebrations are not always like, I had a birthday, clearly, because that's one week a year. Um, <laughs> but my celebration this week was not pretending everything was okay. Right. And like, If somebody asked how I was, I actually said, now maybe it wasn't somebody that I wanted to give all like the deep, dark secrets to, but like, I would say, meh, I'm functional. Like we're getting through. It's been a week, but like, I was honest with my answer. And then for people who didn't know what I was going through or am going through, and they would ask how they could help. I would be honest and say, I, I wish I could ask for help. I don't know what help I need. Right. Like, and, um, which by the way, has already made me change like how, if I want to reach out to help for somebody else that I would just like offer things and be like, here are three things I would like to offer you that I would like to do. You can feel free to pick the fourth option, which is none of the above, but like, because, you know, it is, it is so hard to ask for help and to be vulnerable and share that you're having blah feelings. It's hard to even figure out what kind of help would be helpful. Right. Um, Warm beverages, just so we're all clear, is always helpful. (laughs) Just so we're all on the same page. Warm beverages, you always. Know, surprise deliveries of warm beverages is always considered helpful. Um, but I think I think that like, yeah, I think it is it is very hard and and 
you know, even the anger, but also just controlling things is a celebrated, um, uh, I don't, it's like a feature. I don't know what to describe it. Um, personality trait. They're always in control. Yes. Well, um, are they, or are they just pretending or are they really miserable? Like what is going on? But you hear like, yeah, they're just, they're always in control, you know? And, and either they're miserable or they're just not showing their vulnerability in front of you. <laughs> like, um, you know, apart from like somebody like on a soccer field, who's like in control of the ball. Um, and by the way, if somebody is always in control of the ball in the soccer field, uh, they're not playing the team, a team sport. Right. They're not passing. Yeah. So like either way, I can't think of a scenario that it's good. Um, maybe pilots. Yeah. I don't know, but they have co-pilots, <laughs> right? right? Like yeah. they need to depend on their co-pilot. Um, so yeah, I think that that part of letting go is letting go of the myth that controlling is better. Yeah. And and being in control is better. Absolutely. Um, the good news is, and we can come back to this uh, after the next break, yep. there's so many ways. I mean, I, I did the research for this one and I found like about 900 ways to let go. There are so many ways that, that you can figure out what fits best with you. Um, to let go of control. So we will talk about that. Uh, we will be right back. In case you didn't already know, we love talking. True story. More than simply talking, we love researching, prepping, and bringing this podcast to life. We launched We Go Boldly with the goal of reaching people dealing with the kinds of questions and concerns that we also face. Things like how to hear my inner voice, how to make sure my habits are worth it and stick, how do I feel my feelings and still manage to function. After years of personal work and lots of trial and error, we realized we have a lot to share on these topics. Now we've been broadcasting for over a year and we are proud of our podcast. And uh, to no one's surprise, we still have a lot to say and talk about. We sure do. We need your help to keep going. Every episode takes time and money to create and we would love your support. So if you like what we are doing, please support us by joining our Patreon community and becoming a monthly subscriber. Join our Patreon community today at patreon.com slash we go boldly. We are so grateful to all of our supporters. Now, back to the show. Okay, well, welcome back, everyone. Um, so we're going to start uh, right at the top with things that we always, always talk about. Um, and so we don't, and we already talked about a little bit of it today. Um, which is, uh, we have to accept like what is happening. We just have to accept that it is actually what happens and what is happening in our lives. Um, that is, I think step one, because at least in my experience, a lot of the, I'm going to hold tight to something and I'm going to control things is because I'm ignoring the other things, right? I am ignoring things that I can't control because I don't want to accept them. And so I am controlling things. Like, let's look at five years of me meal planning. Um, I'm going to control things that I think I can control. So the first step is acceptance. And then one that thing that always popped up on the list time and time again, and it's something that pretty much we all need to do to live a full life is to practice gratitude. And there's a reason in our circle group, we always force everyone to celebrate something. And maybe mine didn't sound like a woohoo kind of celebration, but it feels like a woohoo. So I'm going to, you know, we, we practice gratitude because there is always something to be grateful for. And that can help turn that concept of the universe being hostile to the universe being friendly, which is a good first step. Yeah. And it can be hard. So don't, don't get discouraged, right? Like it can be really hard to find something that you feel grateful for. But I would encourage you to just look around, think about everything in your life and call out whatever you can find, even if you're like me and it's having health insurance today, right? Like even if it's 
the cup of coffee or tea that you're drinking, find something and, you know, maybe tomorrow it'll be something more deep and meaningful to you, but find a way to notice the things in your life that have meaning and acknowledge them. Um, Cause it does make a difference. It, it really does. And you may not know it when it's happening, but down the road, it will, it will have an impact on you. Um, so other ways we let go of control, we focus on what we can control. I mean, we've been talking about this at length today. So I think that is a pretty self-explanatory one. Whatever you can control is really within you. Um, I will, you know, it, I will note you can influence other people, right? Like we know we can influence people. We know what we say to people impacts them. It, you know, we can hurt people's feelings. We can, we can uplift people by the words we use. We want to be kind. We want to do things for people that is, that are, you know, helpful. All of those things, obviously we encourage, (laughs) I don't want to sound otherwise, but we cannot control other people. So, there's a difference between control and influence just to be very, very clear about that. Um, I, I think this is especially hard for people who were parents or had parents, maybe like any, any relation to any parent at all um, is because to a certain extent you, you can control some things, but there's so much that you aren't actually controlling and it's an illusion, yeah. but it, it is a strong illusion of being able to control something more so than maybe if you don't have, you know, young people. I don't know. Taking places. They should try my kids on (laughs) (laughs) because. Like I said, it's an illusion, but I think it it can make it even harder to reflect on the fact that you can't control things because you're like, no, but I, I feed them and I, I tell them when to go to bed and, you know, I I feel like um, not to, not to, go too far off topic here, but I'm pretty sure my son is teaching me a strong lesson in what I cannot control. Um, and it is him. So (laughs) (laughs) thank you, six-year-old. Um, (laughs) and uh, on that note, the next thing in our list is you should live in the moment. Now this is pretty hard. I find this hard, but living in the moment is really about practicing mindfulness, right? It's about focusing on what is happening in the here and now. And so again, I feel like I say this all the time, it goes back to your inner voice. It goes back to being self-aware and not judging who you are and not judging how you feel and just allowing and accepting all of that to come through and all of that to be what it is. And it's that it's okay. And sometimes your feelings don't match, right? Like sometimes you're happy and sad. Sometimes you're happy and angry and it doesn't have to make sense for it to be true. And that all of that's okay. Um, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I thought I like, I like, I know we both like the science of it all. I like, I, we've talked about med- meditation and mindfulness, like at nauseum, but just yeah. a fun reminder that it actually helps people's focus and emotional control. Like, like a lot of this stuff actually helps you control what you can control better mm-hmm. than trying to control things. <laughs> so just, you know, as an aside, um, a fun one that's super easy, no hard thing to do at all is to stop being a perfectionist. Yeah. Get easy, it right. Easy. No big deal. <laughs> um, this one though, I want to spend some time talking about this one or at least a moment. Conquer your fears with a list. And going back to this concept that control is rooted in fear and we're controlling things because we're scared. I think that there's some, you know, things to legitimately be afraid of, but many times fear is an illusion. It is, it is something that is not true or something that there's just as good a chance that it won't happen as it will happen that we see as real. And so I think it, this concept of writing a fear list, right? It actually gives you the ability to figure out what you're afraid of, figure out like, are there things on this list that like I should legitimately be afraid of? Because maybe there are, and then you you game plan those. Or there are things on this list that like, oh, I don't, so what if that happens, right? Like, 
Um, and that's, you know, sometimes you have a, a conversation I have with my kids where it's like, okay, let's say that happens. So what, like, what, what, what is the worst? Like, it, it's, it's kind of like, what is the worst thing that will happen? But like you list all the worst things that could happen <laughs> and then you figure out like how to handle them. And sometimes it's just me like, well, I'll, I'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. And you practice surrendering. And the, the person who, um, the article that I was reading that talked about this talks about, you know, freedom means surrendering. And I, you know, I think so much of us equate freedom and control. Like if we're just in control, we can do whatever we want when really freedom means being willing to surrender and be at peace with yourself and to trust and, and trust that it's not, yes, maybe it's trusting the greater universe, but it's also trusting that you can handle what happens. Yeah. I, that is such a, like, I want to underline that six times and exclamation point that for people freedom is trusting yourself and yes, trusting the universe, I think, and trusting that everything is ultimately going to work out, but trusting yourself. And that is like, I think one of the hardest lessons to learn that trusting you are capable that you, who you are again at your core, who you are is enough, is good, is kind, is, is worthwhile all the things we've been talking about this whole time that the person you are is the right person and that is something that for whatever reason for whatever stupid messed up reason we culturally like to tell each other we're not um and it's like the wrong message it's it's the message that i i've heard my whole life and not even from like people i know just from the world, right? That who we are isn't enough. We should dye our hair. We should change the way our face looks. We should be smaller. We should be bigger. We should be taller. We should be shorter. We should wear different colors. We should be a doctor. You should be a nurse. You should be whatever it is, right? Like whoever you are today is not the right person. And all of that information, whether you think it's infiltrating you or not is. And so finding a way to accept who you are and let that person out, let that person shine out, be visible is how we find freedom. That is freedom. Well, and, and trusting yourself. Yeah. Trusting that person, whoever that person is, that you are capable of handling whatever it is that comes, right? That's where so much of our fear is rooted in is fear that we won't be able to handle it. So if we can control enough to make sure it doesn't happen, and and oftentimes that control means we do 87 things that are so much harder than the thing we're just trying to avoid. Right. And so I think that if you trust in a God or a universe, that is obviously very helpful. But we also have to trust in ourselves that we can handle what comes. And I, I think that, you know, when you open up um, to people, so when I was um, when I was leaving my marriage, there were a few people that knew what was going on, and they would send me these messages of encouragement, and they were frustrating because I was like, I don't want to be told I'm strong, I don't want to be told any of these things. Like I'm just, I, I'm just doing what I have to do. I'm just doing what I have to do. And then I got, I left, and I got to the, like the next day. And it was really, really hard. And I cherished those messages, those reminders that I was strong and that I could get through this. And it's, it, it was, it was like whiplash how I went from being resentful of them to being um, thankful for them, but they only existed because I let people in. Right. And so I think that we also have to trust ourselves to surround ourselves with people who know us well enough, sometimes better than we know ourselves, um, to at least if we don't know ourselves very well, which happens a lot, um, to listen to what they say, right? Like how often does someone give you a compliment that you dismiss or tell you something that you've done well that you dismiss because you just, you're not willing to, to trust yourself. So 
I think part of that is, you know, um, and this is just something that's not on the list, but like trusting yourself and, and believing the people that are kind, <laughs> like not the mean people, don't believe them. No. Believe, and you can, and here's the other thing, you can decide to do that, right? Like you can decide to believe the kind people and not believe the mean people. Like that's totally fine. Um, but believing those things and then a- as you're on your journey to know them yourselves, right? Like hopefully you'll know that you're strong without being told that eventually, but it's okay to just rely on other people to tell that to you for a little bit. Um. Well, that kind of skips ahead to one of them, which is welcome your vulnerability, right? And stop viewing it as a weakness. And I think that as we embrace our power, one of the truest ways to do that is to welcome our vulnerability. And I think there's no, you have looked have to look no farther than Oprah, <laughs> who is incredibly powerful, obviously, both like in the world, but also you can tell it her inner knowing just sort of close out from her. Um, but, and, and obviously sharing the world with everything you've gone to, through um, doesn't, is not what you have to do in order to be vulnerable. But as she became more open about who she was and more comfortable about who she was, that inner glowing and that power, you could, you can watch it. You can look back at her life for the last 40 years and you can see it change. The, and and she is a vulnerable person. She is willing to be vulnerable, and yet no one thinks she's not powerful. And I I mean like, and I mean powerful in the truest sense of full of like inner power. Yeah. Right. And so if you need a you know a person to follow, um, but I, I do think we need to be more willing to welcome vulnerability. Absolutely. And and not looking at it like it's a weakness that it's something to be ashamed of. I, I think that is such a, a a failure of society not a failure of individuals but of society um just a couple more because i know we have to wrap up but um some that i like seeking moments of silence and solitude uh toba knew i was gonna say that one <laughs> one of my favorites um pausing to notice your feelings and thoughts right so yes back to our busyness season, we're all so busy. We're all so caught up in our lives. But if you take a moment every day just to notice, what are you feeling? What are you thinking? Even jot it down in a notebook, right? Or in your notes on your phone, whatever it is, just be aware, like start being aware. It will it will help. Um, I also particularly like these two, and I think they go together, but talking to yourself with humor and TLC and naming your inner dictator. I really like this idea of naming your inner dictator because then you can make fun of them, right? Like I obviously, I joke a lot. I'm a sarcastic human. Like I make fun of things. It's one of my coping mechanisms. It's how I'm alive. It's it's one of the things I do to help me release some of the need to control things, release some of the the tension I get and the nervousness and the anxiety and all those things. Um, But it also helps me just like stop feeling like I have to be perfect all the time. You know, if that inner voice gets to me and starts saying mean things, I can make fun of it because it's so ridiculous, right? So if you name it something absurd, then it helps you do that. Um, so I really liked that one. I thought that was a really good suggestion. Well, and so we recorded next week's interview so long ago, and I have been so excited for people to hear it. But, um, you know, she said something, and I don't want to steal her thunder, but I'm just going to steal it just like a tiny little bit <laughs> um, that like exploded my mind, which I think that so many of us assume that the kind, encouraging, lifting up voice in our head is the wrong one. Right. Yeah. That's, that's the one <laughs> I'm just Riley made a, a like physical motion that made yeah. me laugh, but like, um, like a sigh of, I don't know what, um, yeah. but like, you know, we, we always just assume that that's the wrong one, right? Like that is the voice of that's unreasonable because they think the world is a friendly place. And that voice thinks that we can do great things. And, um, like hint, by the way, like that's, 
the correct voice. Yeah. But the other voice, the ones that's like, are you sure you want to do that? Or that doesn't look very right. Or you need to do it this way. Or, you know, if you were just a little more put together, things would right. be better. And so I think by taking that voice and giving it a name and, and thinking of it as your inner dictator, and it almost separates it from you. Like it creates some space. And it's like, I don't need to listen to you. You. You're not in charge, Maleficent, like whatever you're going to name. I like Gollum. That was kind of like my favorite. But like, you're, you know, whatever the inner dictator is that you, you call it, like it, it provides separation between you and those negative, mean, nasty thoughts. And I think that that means that you can process them and deal with them. Whereas when there's no separation, it's much harder to do that. Yeah. I just think it's great. It's fun. And it's fun. Like, why not have fun with yourself? If you're going to go through this, you got to, you've got to be able to laugh about it, honestly. 100%. Um, so uh, I think it's time as much as we would love to talk about this to wrap up. Yes. Um, do some homework, yep. which I now realize I forgot to post. Um, so I will think of some homework off the fly unless you have something. Um, well, if you have ideas, go for it. Otherwise I can come up. With no, something. no, you go, you go right ahead. So since we're talking about letting go of control today, um, what I think we should do for homework, of course, is journaling. Cause you know, we love to have you guys journal, but what I think we should do is have you write down a, or take a, you know, take a moment, do some brainstorming on what you think you might be holding on to a little too tight in your life. Now that could be people, it could be situations, it could be, um, you know, both, it could be family members. So look broadly at your life, take a, take a, you know, a broad perspective kind of survey of everyone, everything in your life, set a timer. If you want to, you know, sometimes, you know, we've recommended that before because sometimes these questions are very open-ended and it gets overwhelming. So if you want to set a 10 minute timer for where you're, you know, like 10 minutes of brainstorming, write everything down you can think of if it's, you know, all of your family members, if it's your job, wherever of where you're holding so tight to controlling what might happen with these particular relationships or whether you're going to stay in a job or if you're going to look for a new job or, you know, if you're, you feel like your boss is, you know, unfair to you or wherever it is. So do that. And then the next step is to, write down how it is you can start to unwind that control. So we gave you a whole list of ways to let go of control. Um, so think, you know, if you need to rewind, go for it <laughs> and think about what you can do to loosen those strings a little bit. It doesn't have to happen all at once. You can do it, you know, slowly. You can do it step by step or you can do it all at once, whatever, whatever you want. But pick one, you know, pick one way, pick one relationship and start to let go a little bit and see how it feels. Um, reach out to us on social media, direct message, however you feel comfortable. Let us know how it goes. If you have questions, we're always here to help. Um, we still have a few spaces in our month, uh, weekly circle. So if you're interested, you can find that on our uh, website or on our link tree, which you can find on our bio on Instagram. So check that out if that's interesting to you. Otherwise, we will see you back here next week for another episode. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to We Go Boldly podcast. We know you're busy and we love spending time with you. If you enjoyed this week's episode, let us know. Head to Apple Podcasts right now to rate and review our show. While you're there, be sure to click that subscribe button. Want more us time? Follow us on all the socials at Go Boldly Together. Want even more us time? As in all the coaching pizzazz. Find us at GoBoldlyInitiative.com for all the info. 
We will be back with more excitement, research, and deep thoughts next week. Until then, keep on being the bold, brave, amazing people we know you already are.